That wind really picked up, didn't it? Yeah. What kind of Jesus do they serve? The one they're looking at in the mirror? The one they hear on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> on Wave FM and The Fish and um, Moody Radio. I think you've heard Moody Radio say stuff like that. Well, the songs. The songs they get there, you know, loving hippie Jesus that doesn't judge anybody. Turn to Jesus. Jesus is going to judge all those that have blood. That's right. The Jesus Christ of the Bible, the true and living God, the one that conquered sin and death and hell is going to judge one day. Jesus Christ. He rose from the grave. Hallelujah. The Jesus Christ of the Bible. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is going to rule and reign on this earth one day and all wickedness is going to be stomped out. Stomped out all the wickedness will be. Are you going to be part of that wickedness? Is Jesus, is, is Jesus going to have to come back and judge you? Oh, you need to escape his judgment. You need to escape his wrath. And that's only available through faith and repentance. Faith in Jesus Christ and repentance towards God. Faith, faith that Jesus died for your sin and repentance. God did everything good for you and what did you do? You rebelled against him. He gave you a conscience. You knew it was wrong when you stole. Everybody knows it's wrong when they lie. Everybody knows it's wrong when they fornicate with a stranger. Everybody knows it's wrong when you pay to have somebody murdered. Even if they're only a few centimeters long and they're still inside their mama's belly. It's still wrong. It's still murder. And God is going to judge the wicked. God is going to cast them into the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you need to escape. You need to flee from the wrath to come. You need to flee from the wrath of God. And the only place to flee to would be in Jesus Christ. Yes, if you are in Jesus Christ, you could be saved. You could be born again. You could be forgiven. There's forgiveness available today. There's forgiveness available for everyone. See, Jesus Christ... Who is God in the flesh when he died? He made provision for everybody. His blood was sufficient. His blood is sufficient today for everybody. Anybody could be saved. There's hope for everyone. Except for those that reject Jesus Christ. Those that turn from the salvation offered by God. There's no hope for them on Judgment Day. We have several Catholics in here, including the bar owner, he's a Catholic, but yet he's dealing with blood money. How wicked is that? And his excuse is he's a capitalist. But I guess I know what it really is. It's called the love of money is the root of all evil. Mammon, the God Mammon. Mammon. Jesus said you can't serve God and mammon at the same time. Nope. Did you know that sinners, sinners will be smoking in hell, sir? That's right. Sinners, the Bible says, sinners will be smoking in hell. It says the smoke of the poor man is seated up to heaven forever and ever. What a wicked, wicked thing to come out here and support all this baby murdering. I'm not, I'm not the least bit surprised at all the guys right here. Because they're, they're nothing but a bunch of Ahabs. Jezebel tells them what to do. All the Ahab guys are told what to do by their girlfriends. And they want to they wanna be friends with the girls. They don't want to be a man. A real man stands for Jesus. A real man's not afraid. A real man stands and preaches Jesus. A real man will stand for the innocent. For what's right. And what's right. A real man will die for his friends like Jesus did. Yep. A real man is not a sissy. All these long-haired, feminine guys running around here are sissies. And they need to repent. 
The Bible says the effeminate shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Nope, not one of them. And the Bible also says long hair is a shame for a man to have. Nature tells you that. Yeah, nature, you don't, even, you don't even have to go read that in a book. You just know right off the bat, you don't want to look like a woman. But what do we got today? We got a bunch of guys that think they're women today. We got transgenderism. We got Planned Parenthood trying to get, get some of these hormone pills to these transgender. They're trying to turn men into girls. They're cutting off all their private parts. And they're adding some on there. So what do we got? We got all kinds of wickedness in this nation. Confusion. The, oh yeah, confusion. Man wearing dresses. Women trying to act like men. Oh, how wicked that is. The Bible says a man should not wear that which pertains to womankind. That's right. It's an abomination. Man should not lie with mankind as he lies with womankind. That's an abomination. Yeah, that's in Leviticus. Go to the book of Romans. It's wicked. It's wicked. And God, what else does God hate? People think God loves. They don't hate anything. Yes, the Bible says that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. You should too. Yeah, everybody ought to hate the hands that shed innocent blood. But instead of paying your, your, uh, your assassinator, you know, these assassins, they go in and kill these innocent little children, and uh, you're supplying blood money to that, you ought to feel guilty. You ought to, your conscience, is, if you don't, your conscience is seared with a hot iron. And you're in trouble with God. You're, you're resisting the Holy Ghost. And actually you're blaspheming the Holy Ghost because you can't get saved unless your heart gets broken uh, toward God. That's right. A the broken Bible heart says, contrite. Yeah. The Bible says repentance toward God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you know the Bible says the only way you can please God is by faith. Yep. Without faith it's impossible to please God. That's the truth. You can't have faith when you're holding hands with the devil. Nope. You can't have faith when you're supporting wickedness. You can't have faith when you're uh, when you're sinning against God. It's just those two things are contrary. Uh, you can't have faith unless you hear the truth and obey the truth. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Without the Word of God, you can't be saved. The Bible says the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. So if you're out here and you think what we're preaching is foolishness and silly, guess what? The Bible says you're a fool and you need to get saved. That's right. You need to wake toward righteousness and sin not. That's you need to have a says. come to Jesus meeting. That's the problem with the bar owners. That's the problem with getting drunk. That's the problem with all these wicked things. Uh, the Bible says a drunkard should not inherit the kingdom of God. No. So you haven't got a you haven't got a hope. You haven't got a promise. You you don't have anything when you stand before the holy holy Jesus. Jesus is going to judge you completely. Jesus is going to judge all people. But guess what? We're coming here to help you to avoid that kind of judgment and have a good ending. No, that's that love. Kind of judgment. That's love. The Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die and after that the judgment. See, you got two appointments, people. You got two appointments. You got an appointment with death and you got an appointment with Judge Jesus. That's right. And we're not, I didn't say Judge Judy. I said Judge Jesus. That's right. So you got an appointment. You may have you may have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. You may have an abortion appointment next week. And you may get both of those. You may miss both of those. But you're going to have an appointment with Jesus. You're going to have an appointment with Jesus. You need to repent. Williamson County people need to repent. Every one of them. All the band members here tonight need to repent. You're rock and roll. You need to repent concerning your rock and roll. Matter of fact, if you ain't got the right kind of rock and roll, you're going to be rolled into hell, and you're going to be uh, you're going to be rocked. You're going to be praying and crying for the rocks to fall on you and keep Jesus. 
uh, comes back. That's the truth. So we're going to come back here. We're going to preach Jesus be crucified. The only way you can get saved is to repent. You know what repentance means? It means change your mind, your heart, uh, concerning what God says is right and what God says is wrong. Okay? So you need to repent today. It's ugly. It's heinous. These babies need a representative tonight. And we're out here to speak for the babies. Uh, we're out here to speak God's message to remind sinners that they're on their way to hell and they're going to suffer the consequences. They're going to suffer uh, for all eternity. The rich man that woke in hell, he knew the reason why he was in hell. You know what the reason why he was in hell? The rich man said, uh, go tell somebody, go tell my brothers to repent uh, from the grave. Uh, and he knew what it what the reason why he went to hell is because he failed to repent. The first message that Jesus preached was repent. repent. This first message, John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus, uh, what he preached was repent. repent. And what do you need to do today? You need to repent. repent. Uh, what did the Apostle Paul say? At this ignorance, God winked at concerning all the false idols. Did you know your beer, your alcohol is an idol? Did you know your, uh, your sports is an idol? Did you know that sex, a sexual relations outside of marriage is an idol? Not only fornication, but it, it is an idol. Uh, people make idols out of everything. And, and you need to repent. Uh, the Apostle Paul said, at this ignorance, God winked at, but now commanded all men ever word repent. To repent. You know what all men are? All men and women. All men and women. You see, women were deceived in the beginning. Uh, you know, so that's the reason why we need to preach not only to the men, but the women. You see, the men are the ones that knock up the women out of matrimony. And then they go to Planned Parenthood and then they kill, uh, they hire an assassin to kill their little baby. So we come out here to help you to nip it in the bud tonight. We come out here to tell you to put your chastity belt on. Uh, to be chaste virgins unto the Lord. You say, well, I'm not a virgin. Well, guess what? You can make a vow to God and you can be a virgin uh, from here on out by trusting in the Holy One, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is going to judge the world in righteousness. Is he going to find righteousness with you tonight? Is he going to find righteousness with you? You see, the only way you can have righteousness is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Without his righteousness, you won't be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Without the righteousness of Jesus Christ, no man uh, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's the matter of fact, the Bible says without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. So you need the Lord Jesus Christ more than he needs you. Matter of fact, Jesus said without me, no, you can do nothing. And I'll say this, uh, you can't even repent without Jesus Christ. Yep. You it's can't mercy. do anything without Jesus Christ. The abortionist, uh, he can't commit his abortion uh, because uh, with Jesus Christ gives him uh, his life. And when he makes the wrong decision, guess who's responsible for it? The abortionist. And who else is responsible? The one that hires the assassinator. The abortionist. They're all responsible. The, the, the man that knocks up the woman. He is responsible. You see, all women that choose abortion are mothers. Now, they, they're mother of a dead baby when they can have their abortions. But praise be to God, they can get forgiveness for the sin of murder today. You can get forgiveness for your sin of murder. Yep. To hate people is murder. Did you know that? That's when what you Jesus hate said. the preachers out here telling you the truth, that's that's like committing murder. Uh, how many middle finger salutes have we had tonight, brother? At least too many. At least a couple dozen or more. Intolerant. Yeah, just just hatred. Did you know that hatred is one of the fruits of the uh, one of the one of the thing one of the spirits of the flesh of the of the flesh hatred of righteousness uh, hatred is hatred is we're not out here hating you we're out here loving your soul tonight we want you to get born again we want you to have a come to jesus meeting if you would come to jesus all the hate can be taken out of your heart that's right uh, you, you need to learn to love 
You need to learn to love God. Learn the truth of God's Word. Amen. Love Jesus. Love, you know what Jesus said the greatest commandment is? To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul. That's and right. love your neighbor as yourself. Yep. Yep. Now, does that mean you get to pick and choose which neighbors you love? Nope. No. You have to love them all. You have to love even the uh, the bums on the side of the road. You have to love uh, the one that hates you. All those that hate me now, I'm going to love you. Uh, and, and also, you have to love the mothers that are about to kill their little babies. And you have to love the little babies also. See, the babies are my neighbors also. They're your neighbors. Now, if you're supporting an organization that is nothing, no more than a hired assassinator to kill little babies, to promote promiscuousness, see that's what Planned Parenthood does. They, they dole out the, the uh, fornication pills. Uh, they uh, dole out all these things uh, to support their wicked agenda. Uh, you see, a Planned Parenthood is a billion dollar business every year. Uh, so they get these things. And Planned Parenthood is one day going to be demolished. It's going to be demolished. And you're going to be demolished with them. You're going to drown in the lake of fire. Uh, you know what it's going to be like to drown in the lake of fire? The Bible says in Revelation 21 8, all whores, whoremongers, liars, thieves, adulterers shall have their part in the lake of fire. That's right. You're, you're going to get the hell fire you deserve. You see, Jesus Christ was the original hellfire and damnation preacher. Praise God. Jesus said, If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. If thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. It's better for you to go into the kingdom of God, uh, blind, hauled, and maimed, than to go into hellfire. So, what does people need to do everywhere today? They need to repent. People everywhere need to repent. Uh, and to, to support the killing, the, the ripping of babies apart is a heinous crime. You know, Planned Parenthood picked a good night, or one of their better nights for a fundraiser tonight. Has anyone of you ever heard of My Bloody Valentine? My Bloody Valentine? Unfortunately. Uh, yeah, Planned Parenthood picks out the real thing. Planned Parenthood also, uh, you know what Valentine stands for? Your heart. Who, who has plucked out more hearts than any other organization in the world? Planned Parenthood. Oh, they'll rip your heart out on Valentine's Day. That's what Planned Parenthood will Your do. baby's heart. Uh, your baby heart. They'll also sell the baby parts. Uh, they sold baby parts to Vanderbilt University. I read it in an article here recently. Oh, how wicked. Have you got a brand to sell of a little baby? Selling brains of little babies to uh, to uh, organizations like Vanderbilt University that sell or that buy baby parts? Oh, how wicked and heinous. You know what the Bible tells us about the end of times? It says the love of many shall wax cold. Their conscience shall be seared with a hot iron. Friends, you're in trouble with Jesus. You need Jesus. Jesus wants to save you from your sin. You're going to be held accountable and responsible for your callousness uh, toward God's creation. Did you know those little babies were made and created in the image of God? Did That's you right. know that you were created in the image of God? And you're an image bearer of God. But you have been marred by sin and you are repulsed toward God uh, in your sin. But how can you make it right with God? I tell you, Jesus has made it right, and you have to come through Him to get made right. And the only way you can be made right is through the precious blood of Jesus. You see, God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. And it was people that took the innocent blood of Jesus and shed His blood there on the cross of Calvary. But that evil that they meant toward Him became good toward us and the Bible says, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. And praise be to God, 
that Jesus died for me, an ungodly person, and praise be to God that He cleansed me of my sins, and He can cleanse you of your sin tonight as well. And He will cleanse you if you'll repent. That's the problem. Uh, the problem is we've got too many wicked out in the world. Uh, they were wicked uh, in those days. They were wicked in Sodom and Gomorrah. They were wicked everywhere. Uh, number one wickedness. Uh, yes, I'm here on a good day. God have mercy. Oh, we got two more middle fingers left. God have mercy on you. Huh? I'm fine, man. I'm fine. Y'all need to repent. Y'all need to repent. Hey, I'm not calling you any names tonight, sir. I'm actually being good to you. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. Unless you see the goodness of God, you're not going to find repentance. You have resisted the Holy Ghost. You're resisting the Holy Ghost tonight, but we're out here to stand for these pre-born babies, these unborn babies that you're trying to murder tonight uh, for your callous, uh, callous uh, fundraising events. Oh, ma'am, you're getting older. Did you know that? By nature, you're going to meet King Jesus real soon. Did you know that? Jesus would never hang out with you. Oh, Jesus. with prostitutes. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think we're doing here? We're hanging out with the scum of the earth, ma'am. What else? Can what do you think we're doing here? here? How low can we go? I hang out. I hang out with the bums. I hung out with the sodomites. I hung out with the drunkards. I hung out with bar people. I'm still. Oh, you got a wicked mouth, man. Even foul mouth women. We got a lot of wicked mouth people around here today. We've got a lot of wicked hearted people that are resisting the Holy Ghost tonight. Uh, the Holy Ghost is here, and He's convicting hearts, He's convicting souls. I wonder how many are going to cry out to God in a wicked way when you start squirming and you're about ready to die. You know what? Unless you're uh, really repenting, God's not going to hear that prayer. God is not going to listen to your ugly prayer when you die and you're screaming out right before you die. Did you know that? God will resist the proud. God resists the proud today. God resists the gay pride too. God can resist you as well. God is going to destroy the wicked one day. God is going to judge you. Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready? We're ready. Now you weren't born ready. You don't even know what's coming on you, sir. I'm out here loving your soul and you don't even realize it. You don't have a clue. Pick up the Bible, put down your, your alcohol, sir. That's what you need to do. It's going to be too late, dude. I'm out here loving your soul. I want you to get saved. I want you to be born again. You know what I would love to know? I'd love for you to get born again and meet me on the streets of glory one day. Did you know that? I would love that. But otherwise, when you go to hell, sir, you're going to remember my voice and my finger pointing at you and telling you you need to repent or you're going to go to hell. Did you know that, sir? Yes, it's going to happen. It's going to happen to you and you and you and you and every one of you here tonight. Every, yes, and you too. You're going to split hell wide open. It's going to happen. You think you've got reality going tonight? Wait till hell fire starts leaping up at you. It's going to be a hot day for sinners on Judgment Day. And I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. And, and, and I wonder, I often wonder how the wicked, when they get tossed into hell, are they going to go in foot first? Or are they going to go in head first? Are you going to do a belly flop in the lake of fire? Or are you going to do a butt flop? I think the sodomites are going to do a butt flop myself. Yeah, they're going to do a butt flop. Yeah, and, and, and the other sodomites, they're probably going to do a face flop. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, so what, what does everybody need to do tonight? Everybody needs to repent. All you witches, you need to repent. All you harlots, whoremongers and whores, sinners, fornicators, wicked people need to repent. You need to repent. You know what it means to repent? Have a changed mind. 
to feel sorry for your sin. That's what brings true repentance. Oh God, I sinned against you. A holy God, forgive my soul, forgive my sin. That's what you need to do before a holy God. What denomination are y'all? It doesn't matter. We're just a Christian denomination. We know we know you already got you've already got a witch denomination to come in. We saw we saw a minister of the devil walk in just a minute ago. Well, she's going to go to hell. Oh, I have never, I, you know, ma'am. The middle finger, we better go home. Uh, yeah. That is, I'm going to melt. I'm, no, no. I'm melting right now. Who is the devil? I'm a, I'm a run away, a run away. Preacher. I'm a snowflake preacher that really hurt my feelings. Have a middle finger stuck in up in me. Hey, I've seen a lot worse. I've had people do all kinds of things. I, there's not too much that I haven't already seen. I've been doing this several years. I'm ready for it. And hey, I'm ready to meet my King Jesus. You got a question? All right, what's your question? Do what? Yeah, we, we go everywhere. Yeah, yeah we go, we, we've been on Broadway, we go to women's marches, we go to rock concerts, Christian concerts. Tight stadium. Tights, tights, football, uh, any Everybody. country music. Everybody. Events on Legislative Plaza. Uh, we, we feed the homeless, help the homeless, and we try to preach to anybody everywhere. We preach to drag queens, we preach to... People walking down the road, people in a group. Wherever there's a I'm crowd. A opportunity preacher. What's your question? So, better Yeah, we do that. I'm asking, but but but. I just got through feeding a whole bunch of several of them last weekend. I appreciate. I can't feed them all the time. I'm, I got to go out and preach too. There's people got to hear. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. How can they hear in the Book of Romans except there be a preacher? So, so in, the Bible says in the Book of First Corinthians, uh, it says the preaching of the cross is to them to perish foolishness. So, this time is maybe less accessible than than preaching love and respect. Well, that's that's the world world's gospel. I'm preaching Jesus' gospel. Jesus preached. Jesus required that we go preach the kingdom of God. And Jesus said uh, that the kingdom of God comes not in an observation, but the kingdom of God, you've got to be born again. And, and you have to repent. You have to believe the gospel. That's the apostles' doctrine in the book of Acts. I understand. I understand. That is the but, but we're. But, but let me answer, say this one thing, and this might help answer your question. We're equal opportunity preachers. If there was one or two people out here we felt led to come out here, we'd preach them as we would the mass crowds. I preached to uh, thirty or forty thousand people one night. I preached two or three another night. Okay. So, uh, so God, see, the Bible teaches us that God is not a respecter of persons. He cares about every soul, and does everybody hear the message? And uh, he makes a way. If somebody's truly seeking him, there's a, like in the book of Acts, Cornelius saw God and prayer. He didn't know God. He didn't know the Lord Jesus. So he prayed and God sent a preacher to him. So, so we don't know that you might get in a situation tomorrow. Uh, and you, you remember the words that I'm preaching today. You might hate me today. You may hate the words I'm preaching today. But tomorrow you may say, hey, that preacher really made some sense. And, and you might be uh, in the hospital and you might be from an accident or heart attack or something happens to you, heaven forbid. But then you'll remember the words of the preacher say, maybe he's got something. Let me grab a Bible. And you realize you're, hey, I'm really lost. I've been really a rebellious person against God and Jesus Christ. And, and I really want to go to heaven. I want to remember what that preacher said and I want to bow. I want to trust the Lord. And you know that, that one thing on the cross next to Jesus. His message was, he looked, he, knew, he says, hey, he looked at the other thief, and the other thief was railing on Jesus and said, oh, get us down, do this. But the thief said, hey, we deserve this. We're thieves. We, we know we, what we did. We broke the law. We deserve this. But hey, Jesus, will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? And Jesus said, yes. That's all you got to do, friend. When you bow to Jesus, he'll, he'll take away your sin. He'll make you a new creature in him. I guess, I guess, because we come from different vastly different yeah. walks of life. Yeah. Um, and by, by the way, I have sin in my life. 
I have sinned against the Holy God, and 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 I I found my I found I, I realized that, and I said, Lord, I've been just as wrong here. I'm just as guilty, and I deserve the hell just as much as anybody else, and I still deserve it. But praise be to God, I don't have to get what I deserve because I I repented and I trusted in Jesus. He saved me. Right. Right. So what's your question? My question is that, that with all that being as a man, yeah. um, my question is that my grandmother always said, catch more flies. Right. Than so right. I guess you've kind of answered that with the, with the ideology of if you shout at me about this stuff, that maybe something will sink in. Yeah. Um, do you think that sometimes that it causes a more stringent Yes. Ideology. Yeah. Well, right, right. See, here, here's the point with the gospel. The Bible tells us firmly that not everybody's going to receive the gospel. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus told us the parable. You, you, you know, all the all the fish you catch, there's going to be a bunch of bad ones, and there's going to be some good ones. And and you know what? Jesus is going to separate those. Yeah. And, and when I preach. I'm a savor of life unto them that live. I'm a flavor. And so those that die and perish, they heard the truth. So by your ideology, what you're saying is, is that, but just so I can be clear about it. Sure. Your ideology is, is, that, is that you're not going to be able to save everybody. No, but I can't you're save anybody. To save, yeah. you're, worth, you're not going to be able to save, but right. you'll be able to yeah. convince someone to right. from the other side. Uh, 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 Jesus, when he called his preachers, their only job is to preach the gospel to lost people, to everybody. It's, uh, it, you know, Paul said, I sowed a Paul's water, but God gives the increase. If God saves you, it's a miracle. God saved me, it was a miracle. God, God wanted me to be saved, God wants you to be saved. And it would be a miracle whoever gets saved. That's a miracle. It's a day's miracle. But here's the deal. I can't save anybody. I can't make anybody get saved. But I can preach to them in the hopes they will get saved. And either way, I've sowed to them. And they'll be judged if they reject. Okay. And, and they've been born. Right. And, and, and irregardless, uh, you know, the, the ones that do repent and hear the message, and they do repent, glory to God. So, so essentially, it's still glory to God. Essentially, what you're doing is you're being a siren. Yeah, I'm, I'm a beacon. I'm a beacon siren, or uh, you know, just a mailman. Uh, a, a warning. I'm a mailman. I'm a messenger of Jesus Christ. I'm a preacher. That's it. Well, I appreciate you having a conversation. Thank with you. Me. What was your name? My name is Garrett. Garrett. My name is Tim. Yeah, uh, I will tell you this: that yeah. I am not. On your side of the no, you don't have to be on my side. I, I just want to be on the side of Jesus. I appreciate you having a conversation. Sure, I'm not here just to scream and shout at everybody. I'm not here to hopefully win your souls. I want you to be born again. Well, thank you. Yeah. God bless you. Hey, just remember something. Hey, if you ever get in trouble, remember the words that I spoke. Pick your Bible up. Remember. God bless you. Turn to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ wants to save you. Jesus Christ can save you. How can Jesus Christ save you? Because He's the Savior. He can save you from your sin. I'm at my bottle of water over there. Did you? I have an open bottle. You want it? You need it? Not sure. Nope. Let me a little bit. Jesus wants to be the friend to sinners. 
sinners, not the friend of sinners. Jesus wants to be your friend tonight, and you you can be Jesus' friend if you'll do what Jesus tells you to do. Yep. What did Jesus tell you to do? He told you to repent. <laughs> Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all the other things that you have need of will be added to you. So if you fail to seek the kingdom of heaven, you're not going to be a friend of God. Matter of fact, the Bible says in the book of John, 1 John, it says, or excuse me, the book of James, friendship with the world is enmity with God. That means you're God's enemy. If you love the drinking, the boozing, and the fornicating, and the adultery, you're an enemy of God. Now, what happens to enemies of God? They lose the war. They lose the war. They lose the battle. All enemies of God get vanquished. They get destroyed. You cannot survive being an enemy of God. It doesn't work. It won't happen. Uh, and you will be uh, you will be seasoned meat on the barbecue of the lake of fire. That's what happens to the enemies of God. Matter of fact, you'll be put in God's wine press and all your blood will be squeezed out just like a lot of you baby supporting killers out here. Oh, bless you, bless you. Thank you for the middle finger. You give me one more brownie point in heaven. One more brownie point in heaven. It happens at the Planned Parenthood events. They can't stop sticking their middle fingers up at us like it hurts their heart or something. Or like we've never seen it before. We're not snowflake preachers. We're not snowflake preachers. We're hardcore, hellfire, damnation preachers through the blood of Jesus Christ, the gospel. We're not going to melt. We don't want you to melt yeah. in the flame. Well, they're in there playing their music now. Yeah. What time is it now, brother? I'm not on no time. Thing, but yeah, it's uh, nine o'clock. Oh, the nine? Yeah. I don't want you to think they run us off. So what do we need to do out right here? What do we need to do? We need to have a come to Jesus meeting. That's right. We need to find out what Jesus thinks about the baby murdering. I know. We need to think about. We need to see what Jesus thinks about killing babies in the womb. We need to think about what Jesus says about murder. We need to think about what Jesus says. When he said you need to be born again, that's what Jesus teaches. The band is right here, right yep. from this window. Yep. Oh man. You about ready? Five more minutes. Yep. I can't believe that it's now playing. Yeah, these cars are always late. Everybody goes out and does all their all their normal stuff, and then they do their after hour stuff at the bar. Right after work, they gotta eat, do stuff, and drop drop the kids off to the babysitter. Yeah, oh man. You know, all that kind of nasty stuff. Well, hopefully, none of these people have kids. Hopefully, but probably they've killed all of them. The memorial. Yeah. But I don't know that. They, they could have been. They actually might. Some of them might be better parents than others. I guess. But I don't think any any real good parent is in there supporting this mess. Not going to happen tonight. Too many femmies at, from the Phoebe March out here. What happens to baby murders in hell? They burn. They burn, baby burn. They burn, sir. What's going to happen to you after you die? Are you going to you going to go you going to go go to hell or what? Are you ready to meet Jesus? It'll be a hot day in hell for baby birds. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Be born again. It's what you need. It's what you need. It's going to be hell without Jesus. It's going to be hellfire without Jesus Christ on Judgment Day. That's the reason why you need Jesus. That's the reason why we all need Jesus. Some of us realize it, some don't. We've had some supporters out here tonight on the horns. A few of this 
supporters. <laughs> right. It's not a good day for sinners on Judgment Day. I wouldn't want to be a sinner on Judgment Day and need to judge Jesus. I didn't say judge Jesus. I said judge Je Jesus. Judge Jesus is going to get judged by Judge Jesus. Brother, I guess you gotta go work tomorrow, right? I do. You're not feeling good either. Let's, let's go ahead and head on, man. Alright. We did our that. job. Everybody knows. Everybody knows the reason why we're here. Yep. Nobody came up screaming in our face. Yeah. We haven't been killed yet. <laughs> right? They ain't been shooting at us. That guy thought he was going to shoot at me after I had told him about the two guys that got shot here before. Nah, he was just being a drama queen. That's what that was. Oh, uh, stupid, man. He just wanted to yell about I don't know who they were. Nah. But you talked about them. <laughs> 